In this video, I'm going to do a review of a product called Social Bee, which is a basically a tool to automate your entire social media presence and not just uh, pushing out the content, but also growing it and engaging with people. And I'll kind of talk about all of the different features that it offers. This also happens to be a deal that is currently on AppSumo. We're going to look at it all. We're going to look and see how it compares to other tools that you may be familiar with. And we're going to go through it all in this video. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorials videos for non techies if you're new here consider clicking on the subscribe button if you don't want to miss a thing click on the bell and everything that I talk about there'll be a link in the video description box down below or you can just head on over to the website for the tool I'm talking about just visit wpcrafter.com slash blah 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 social b oh my gosh I forgot the name I'm just moving too quick today or maybe I haven't had enough coffee all right here is the tool it's uh, gonna be 50 bucks for a lifetime account this is a steal now let me kind of put it in perspective really quick there is another tool very very popular service and there's a lot of people using it and this is better than that tool. That tool's $50 per month. Social B, right now on AppSumo, it's just $49. And this does things that that does not. And it's probably got to be one of the most polished SaaS apps that I've seen that AppSumo has brought out. So it's most likely going to be comparable to Meet Edgar, if you've heard of Meet Edgar. And Meet Ed Edgar was really on the forefront of this concept of evergreen social media posts. So the problem with your typical social media post, same, same problem with um, anything you put on Facebook or Twitter, and that is it has a really short shelf life, right? So if you spend... I don't know, maybe 30 minutes writing the perfect social media post and you publish that out, well, it's got maybe a 24 to 48 hour life and then no one's ever going to see it again. And this is actually a problem. You spent time creating content that could be just as relevant today as it could be in six months or a year or in two years. And you pop it in there, you pop it into Twitter, you pop it into Facebook or wherever you're going to post that that piece of content that you put your time, effort, thought and energy into. And then basically after 24 to 48 hours, no one will ever see it again. It just goes into this empty black hole of social media. And that's a problem. And that's where Meet Edgar came in to solve. And Social Bee is most comparable to that. So the only reason I'm mentioning Meet Edgar is one to put it a framework of what the cost of a service like this normally is, that being $50 a month and social be being less expensive if you bought it direct. But for a time, you can get it on AppSumo for a lot less of a cost at $49. So what this does is instead of you taking this content and putting it directly on Facebook or directly on Twitter, you instead put it into social B into these buckets of content that you will create. And each of these buckets of content, you would probably want to be similar and have kind of a similar posting schedule. So you can have a bucket of content where you only want the content to maybe post once. And you can have another bucket of content that maybe is cute uh, quotes with images or something like that. So you put them in these buckets and then you can start filling up your social media posting schedule. So that's just a quick overview of what it does. And now I'm about to get Mr. Fancy Pants on you right where did it go? Here it is. That's right. This is my attempt at being on point in this video in respect of your time getting a little fancy pants on you. So I have this little thing here of everything I wanted to cover in this video. So what it's going to allow you to do is post to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You're going to notice two things that are missing. That's Instagram and Google+. Plus. I don't know who even posts on, on Google+, Plus anymore. Uh, but you can also post on that today with Social Bee. 
uh, through Buffer. So Buffer is going to be the intermediary. But the good news is the only reason they're doing it that way is because they're waiting on Instagram and Google Plus to approve their API connection. So as soon as they do that, you're going to be able to natively post to all of these platforms here. There are people asking for Pinterest support. I think it might be on their Trello board of things that they may want to implement, but it doesn't today support Pinterest and social bee is going to really do three things. And so first is evergreen. Now, when I was showing you meet Edgar, meet Edgar does the one thing, right? Evergreen. And they do it really well. They pioneered the concept. Social bees just taken that idea and enhanced it and added some other useful tools to it. So I'm going to show you in this video where you create these content categories. The categories can have rules, how you put your social media posts in these categories and then you set a schedule and you could say at two o'clock I want to pull from the quotes category and at four o'clock I want to pull from this category so you can schedule it out like that and everything gets recycled. You can just keep funneling new content into these buckets and you never lose any of your content in that social media black hole. You can always keep reusing the content that you spend your time creating evergreen. I'm going to have to show you that. The second thing is engagement. It does some neat things with engagement. Now it's primarily focused on Twitter and what it does that I think is really cool is if someone adds you or starts following you on Twitter, you can have this automatically send them a mention back thanking them for the ad. You can actually make it say whatever you want back to them and you can pull in to uh, tokens. You know, it's funny, that's actually happened to me. I've actually followed someone on Twitter before and then got this thank you back and I was thinking, wow, did they manually do that? I feel, I feel important to you. And so that's one of the things that the engagement tool does. This is something exclusive the social bee, you don't see this in anything, anything else. And then you have this discovery module, which is a tool to kind of grow your Twitter audience. And I'm going to show you that as well. So this one platform has these three components to it. Now you typically see with these social media applications is they don't have all of these aspects to it. They really just have one thing that they do well. So like I was saying earlier in the beginning of the video, this mostly compares to from the evergreen feature to meet Edgar and that's $49 per month. It's very closely matched to that. That's why a one-time fee of $49 for me is like, I've been waiting for a tool like this for a while. So let's talk about some of the other social media tools and how it differs. Then we'll go ahead and jump into the website and the dashboard. So here's three or so different services that you might already be familiar with. I use them all. So Content Studio, I did buy Content Studio and Content Studio, it, it, it's hard to explain. Have you ever been to a restaurant that serves every single dish but doesn't specialize in any one dish and everything is just okay? That's the best way that I could describe my personal experience with Content Studio. And I know I might be losing some of you in that criticism because I'm sure many of you already have Content Studio and like Content Studio. I have Content Studio and I've just never liked it. It's probably the one of the purchases that I made in 2017 that I regret. And they did recently add the evergreen feature, but it's nowhere near like what you're getting with Social Bee. Uh, with the evergreen feature in Content Studio, it doesn't have these content categories and you don't have all of the fine grain control over what goes out and when and how it all works together. So it's very rudimentary as far as evergreen. And that kind of goes into my thought process and my comment of it does a lot of things, but it doesn't do anything really well. I guess one of its strengths is content discovery, although I don't even think it does that well either. And I know I might lose you some of the, some some of you guys here. That is just my opinion on the tool. And it's one the one tool that's just going to collect dust for me. I don't like it at all. Missing letter. Now, what missing letter does is entirely different. There's just slight similarities, right? What missing letter does is it goes to your blog when you post a new blog post and it automatically writes all this content for you that you then go in, you tweak a little bit, and then 
and you you click approved and then it's going to drip feed that content out and another thing that it does is it also makes those really cool quote images off of your content those image quotes and so that is totally different than what we're we have here with social b i almost wish there and there may be a way of taking what missing letter creates and pumping that in to social b instead and that let let social b handle the drip feeding out and the recycling so that's missing letter missing letter isn't really a evergreen content tool where you put your content in these buckets. It's more of a content generation and then it drip feeds it out. I love missing letter. I think actually on AppSumo, they might have some codes left or they might have run out today. Then that brings me to Planable and also Planable and Amplifier, which was a deal last year. Now what Planable does is it's really just good for going in there, writing your social media post, having a team come in to audit it. So maybe a client for an approval process and then you post it and then your content goes out. There's no reposting or taking your content and putting it in this reusable bucket. And the same goes for Amplifier. Amplifier and Planable are very similar in that way. Now, when Amplifier came out, they had said that they were going to build this evergreen thing and they totally flaked out. And I, I don't even know what's going on with them uh, anymore. But I'm glad Social B is coming and I've got Social B working right now for me. So let's go back and take a look at some of the deal points. I'm just going to scroll down and we'll jump into what Social B does. Okay, so you're gonna get for the $49, you're gonna be able to connect in 10 social profiles. Now, there is some word that after you get this, if you needed more, like say up to 25, they're gonna have a, a, another thing where you can pay $49 directly to Social B, and then you'll have the additional accounts uh, for a lifetime. So it's not per month if you wanted additional accounts. And here's where it tells you where you can post and you could create these categories and evergreen posts to them. You can also plug in RSS feeds. So what this is, if you wanted to and say you're posting a blog post and what it can do is push that content into a bucket and then post it to your social media accounts for you. And you can also do the same thing for other blogs that you might want to syndicate their content. I don't do that, but uh, some people like to do that. There's these Twitter growth tools. I'm gonna take a quick look at those. Uh, actually, let me just uh, talk, talk about them. Copy followers. So you can put someone's Twitter handle in, see all of their followers, and then you could follow them. And then typically what will happen is then they're gonna follow you right back. You can do keyword searches to find followers and content, user searches, upload followers. So I guess if you had, a, I don't know if that is, I think it's if you had a list of follower names, you can uh, plug it in there or something like that. I don't know, and non-followers, that's actually cool. I think what that's gonna be is you can see out of all the people following you on Twitter, you can see who, or should I say, all the people you're following on Twitter, who's not following you back. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and unfollow them and only follow people that follow you. Wow, so much following going on these days. Then you have those messages I was telling you. If someone follows you, you can automatically uh, mention them back and thank them, but you can also send a direct message back to them. As far as these categories go, you get 50 of them for, in my mind, 50 content categories. I don't see myself using more than five to 10 max. So 50 is very generous. You can have up to 5,000 posts per category. Now there are other tools that do this this evergreen and i gotta say that social b has the evergreen market cornered they have the tool down and you're gonna see it i mean it is solid the way they implemented it intuitive their ui their onboarding everything is going to be on point now um 5, posts per category that's way more than i think anyone needs just so you know there are other tools in that do kind of a similar thing with the evergreen and it's like 500 posts per category so it's very limited so you really get the full tool with social b you literally get the full tool okay lifetime we already know that in AppSumo you get your 60 days back i like to go here and read the comments to see what people are asking and i always do that before these videos if you see a review from me 
and you might go ahead and give that a, an, an upvote. So there's these ways of upvoting. So if you would just go ahead and upvote that, that's pretty cool. Make sure more people see it. Okay, so here is their website. It's great. Content, grow, engage. And I would recommend going here and taking a look through the features and the pricing. They also have just so you know a concierge service. And this is really cool. It's a, literally a white glove service. It's $50 per month and it's a manual process where people are putting in the work to grow your Twitter audience for you. I think it's a great value. You know, some of the things involved with Twitter, there have been tools that automate the process and that's like automatically following and unfollowing people. But when you do that, if Twitter finds out they cut off the tools API access, that actually happened to an AppSumo deal named Juicer and they got totally cut off. And I knew when I saw Juicer on AppSumo, I thought, huh, that sounds a little black hatty what they're doing there. And I, I don't necessarily think they're gonna be in it for the long haul. Also something important to mention is you can integrate this with some of the link shorteners. So let me just go through the content features Right here and then we're going to jump right into the tool okay so you got the evergreen you've got these categories uh, I've talked about that a bunch and you can set rules on a per category basis I'm going to show you that I'll show you how you can set up your posts so you can have posts specifically for Twitter or specifically for more than one social network you get to choose that when you're popping in your information there is a full calendar where you can set everything up and then there's also a way to see what has already Already posted uh, you can also when you're putting in a post so for me this is actually perfect so I might make a new video and I'll take my YouTube link and then I can go in here and I don't want it to just drip out on a schedule I want that sucker posting right now because I want to get as many eyeballs and get the word out that I just created this great piece of t a content so you can actually go ahead and instead of going to Twitter and Facebook, you put it in here, it'll post it immediately, or that one post can initially go out at a specific time, and then it will go into its recycling in the evergreen categories. So you got post previews. Now there is, there's importing you can there's lots of ways of getting these posts in there you're not having to manually type everything out and that was one of the problems with the evergreen feature i saw in content studio you have to manually type everything in there one by one by one it's so stinking tedious here you have lots of ways of getting your content into these content categories including one way that will be coming out in the future where you can have it pull in everything that you've ever posted on twitter and you can automatically sift through it and just click on buttons of what you want to throw in one of those categories. So they have lots of ways of making it easy to get your content into the tool. I'm not gonna be doing a tutorial in this video, but most likely in a week, I'm thinking I'll do a tutorial video for anyone that purchases Social Bean wants to know all the ins and outs of actually implementing it for their social media profiles. Okay, here, this is really cool. Custom URLs and tracking. Right now, it will work with Bitly and also it's Rebrandly. Now, Rebrandly does have a, a free plan, but I think it's only limited to maybe a thousand links or something like that. Um, and then you have Bitly. I don't know if they, I think they want to add uh, some additional of uh, these uh, URL shorteners. There's a popular one, I forget the name, I think maybe Pixel Me or something like that, or or something along those lines that uh, is very popular with AppSumo users because it was a deal last year. Okay, so let me instead just go ahead and jump into the tool right here. Now I wanna let you know what to expect. When you sign up and you make the purchase and you create your account, I've got to say they have the best onboarding process that I've ever seen for any tool that I have ever used. And I know I'm being a little dramatic there, but I really feel that strongly about how good the onboarding process was here of, okay, step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this, to make it as easy as possible to start using their tool. Now, the only thing that I don't like about this tool is this image right here. Now, it's actually a little annoying. I'm going to message the developer and say, hey, do you mind 
I, I, okay, can I? Can we get rid of that? I mean, it's just a little annoying. Uh, it's cute the first time, but for it to be there every time in the dashboard, it's just a little bit much for me. So right here, you can see the social media profiles that I have it connected to. Now, it's important to note on Facebook, you can have it be on your personal profile on your Facebook pages, or if you're an admin of a Facebook group, you can also add a Facebook group. So this is just the dashboard. Now, here are where ev all the meat and potatoes are with the tool under here under content so let's just go straight to it because this is the main strength of this platform is these categories right here so I can make new categories but when you go through the onboarding process it knows kind of what the most common categories are so you don't have to sit there and think about it they've already thought through it for you now you can see that each of these categories have their own unique settings and that's where the power is so it's saying blogs from RSS so this could be linking to your own blog uh, this category is set to share once and then it's set to not shorten the links that are in it and and I just like how you can not only put your content in categories based upon the content that it is but you can also have different rules for the content in those categories so it sets these up for you right here now you can go ahead and edit the rules for this particular category I can just click right here and I can change it to evergreen and there's some various options here let me click on cancel so let's go ahead and click inside of one of these categories so I'm gonna click right here into our blog posts and you can see I haven't added anything yet like I said I'm gonna do a tutorial on that later once I have all of it worked out you can click on add post and then right here now I can go ahead and create this post for this the particular social network that I want it on so if I want it on Twitter only I can go ahead and write this for Twitter you can tag people on Twitter and on Facebook they are limited to whatever these social media platforms API tools allow you to do so I think right now with Facebook you can't tag a person but you can tag pages and probably tag groups I don't really do much tagging like that anyway uh, for something like this so you can go ahead and add your piece of content and then right here is your option to post it at a specific time so you can go ahead and pop that in and here's what I like about this you get this fine grain control over each piece of content and then the category so right here you can set it to expire so maybe I only want this to post so often maybe like 10 times and then or maybe for the next month say it's some kind of promotion that's over in a month then you can have it expire then and you can also have it expire based on how many times it's actually posted I think these fine grain controls on a piece of content basis and then on a category basis are really what makes this tool stand out to me so you're gonna want to go in here and dump all your content into these categories now there's some other interesting things that it has are very unique you can import a CSV you can import links so for me I could get all the links to my blog posts and I can pop them all in here if I wanted to do that but there's also pocket integration so if you use pocket you can uh, do some things in pocket and have it push into social bee which I think is very unique because you can just be using pocket on your mobile phone and then boom it's already going to be in here in social bee for you and then of course you have RSS so now let's look at the other side of the coin which is the posting so right here first thing you need to do pretty much is set up a schedule so I've gone ahead and when you when you actually first go into the schedule it's going to see if you want them to automatically give you the recommended recommended schedule of posting and this is what it comes up with and it looks like on the surface it looks like man that's a lot of posting going on right uh, I just don't see like for instance on Monday me posting one two three four five six seven eight times oh nine times 10 11 12 13 that's a lot of posting now to in their defense what they wanted to do is make this simple so you can go here and you can set it up like this and then you can thin it down you can go ahead and start deleting uh, these different posts and so it it actually looks like more than it is so right here is saying on on Monday 
at 812, we're only going to post to LinkedIn and we're only going to post out of the curated category. And it's not saying let's post to all the networks in at this moment. So this kind of spreads it out to make it look more natural. So each of these schedulings, you could see the network it's suggesting, the category it's suggesting, or multiple categories. You can see it all right here. So what you can do is you can go ahead and thin this down, or you can just start from a blank slate and start scheduling it out how you think it would work best for you. So once you've set your schedule and you have content in the buckets, you are off to the races. Uh, you can delete these schedules. You can tweak this all that you want. It's going to start pulling content from the buckets and posting it. Okay, so that's our schedule set up and you can see, well actually I didn't, I don't think I clicked on this if I just wanted to see my Twitter schedule. Uh, okay, here's a more condensed version of it. I actually like this condensed version so I can see exactly what it's suggesting per network and then I can go ahead and I can remove like for example, I can just click right there and remove whatever I want to remove or tweak and modify it. All right, here it can show you what is queued up next and right here it's going to show you what it has already posted. That brings us now to our grow tools. This is the second main feature of this tool. Now some of this, like the auto follow, is that concierge service where it's automatic for you but it's not automatic. There's someone manually growing your audience for you and it is a monthly fee. But we can do user searches. This is all kind of self-explanatory keyword searches. Honestly, for me, I don't really see myself using this list of features at all. Um, I prefer my social network followings to grow organically and people organically going there. And I make calls to action where I say, hey, follow me on Twitter and I'll have unique Twitter content or Facebook, join the Facebook group. And so I have that in a lot of my videos and my content. I've got links on my website, uh, but I don't really search out following people so that people will follow me back. Uh, but it is a strategy that a lot of people use because it's a, a, a working strategy. Okay, and here's that engage tool where you can put different mentions. So that means if someone tweets you, then you're going to be able to automatically send this message. Let's take a look at the default suggested message. So if someone follows me, it's going to take their Twitter handle and say, thanks for the follow comma and then refer them by first name have a great and then whatever the today is tuesday and it's going to automatically do that for me and you can actually go in here and add multiple templates and it will rotate through them so it doesn't look like some automated thing i think it's a really nice touch if you're on twitter it's a very nice touch to thank someone for following me. I know on my YouTube videos, I try to thank everyone whenever they leave a comment or something like that to make sure that they know that I know that they did that uh, for me. So that is the mentions. And then you can also direct message. Personally, I don't find value in the direct messaging because my experience has been, I don't even check my direct messages on Twitter. So it's more of a spammy thing. I'm not saying that's what it actually is, but to me, that's my perception. And lastly, I'm not going to hover over it, but I have this edge tab. And the only reason I have that is because I reached out to the developer of this tool and he added added some of their under the serious beta features that they're working on and I have access to them under this edge tool. I can say some things that they're working on which was that that Twitter posting history import. So that's a tool that they have. It's available to me in this edge thing. They want to work on it some more and that's why I don't want to show you it but I can say that I did try it out and I was like wow. That was really easy to get all of my tweets in there so I can see which ones were valuable enough to retweet out or to put in one of these evergreen buckets. So the last thing I want to say about this, and it's more about the concept of this evergreen concept. And I would say that if you're going to do this, do it very sparingly. Don't like dump content after content after content on all of your social networks. It's good to keep stuff going there that you think will actually be of value to the people that are following you on those networks. And also put in some stuff that might be current and time-based and stuff like that so people can get to know you or your business better. I would recommend though not 
just having the whole darn thing be automated because nothing is more annoying than that. I can tell you several people, I can name their names, but I'm not going to name their names, but I could name them if, if, if I was in private and this wasn't going on YouTube of people that I've, uh, followed them on Twitter. And then I realized it, you know, they're, they're posting all these links to articles from five years ago and I immediately unfollow them. And I got to say, not only do I unfollow them, kind of my respect or an admiration for them goes down a few notches. So you got to be careful how you do this. Okay. Uh, don't put a piece of content that's getting auto posted that is so outdated, so irrelevant, it's actually going to be a huge turnoff and it's going to hurt you more than it helps you. That's one of the things I like about the way that Social Bee has implemented it because I do think that this evergreen concept is important and there is value to it. I think that most people implement it the wrong way and that's why uh, some people get that experience that I just described where it's become kind of a turnoff. So I am going to be implementing Social B, uh, but I'm going to do it very, very methodically and very carefully so that I'm only sharing, I'm not sharing just for the sake of sharing. I am sharing stuff that is relevant, is valuable. I just don't have the, the time to remember to put it out there regularly, even though it's going to value, be a value to people. So that's all I got to say about that. This is Sociably. I think it's great. I recommend it. I think it's a great value. I think when you go in and you see the polish behind the app, you're going to be very impressed. Right now, if you want to get it, just visit wpcrafter.com slash social B, or you can visit the link in the video description down below. I want to actually, though, hear from you, your opinions and your perspective on this concept of this evergreen posting. Do you think it's a valuable uh, strategy, a valuable concept to you and what you're doing? And is it something that you would consider implementing in your business? Or if you have or use any of these other tools, just go ahead and share that information down below in the comment section. Hey, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.